She is a Detroit native, not afraid to speak her mind. Former ESPN anchor Jamil Hill has never shied away from controversy. That's right. In her new book, Uphill, she doesn't hold back, opening up about her personal life, explaining how growing up in Detroit helped shape her into the woman she is today. Kimberly Gill spoke with Jamil Hill and joins us now with more. Hi. Hey, hi, guys. I don't want to give too much of the book away, but I'll tell you my big takeaway from sitting down with Jamel Hill is all the challenges that she overcame. She was raised by a single mother who struggled with substance abuse. She was nearly raped by a friend of a family member. She talks about having an unwanted pregnancy and most recently found herself at the center of controversy when in a tweet she called President Trump a white supremacist. Her book is a story of resiliency and perseverance. And it's also a testament that your circumstances, no matter how bad, do not have to dictate the life you envision for yourself. And how fitting um, that when you grace these halls, you knew you wanted to be a sports journalist. Well, in Mumford was where that sort of uh, passion for journalism started. I wrote for the Mumford Times, a high school newspaper, because I took a journalism class, and that's what you did. And it wound up, you know, intersecting with what was a very monumental summer for me. I applied for an apprenticeship program at the Detroit Free Press, was able to get that. And then that same summer, the National Association of Black Journalists, their annual convention was in Detroit. My relationship with this city is, is just very special. Uh, I think most Detroiters that grow up here, we know that there's a certain perception of our city, and therefore there's a certain perception of who comes from the city. And because people often made Detroit the butt of so many jokes, it ingrains a chip on your shoulder. And that's how the people feel here. It's like, we know that we are not a city defined by the worst of us. So as I progressed in my career, I wanted to make it known where I was from and how much what I learned here and what was instilled in me here carried on and carried me upward throughout my career. Why, why did you write a book and why now? I always saw myself as an author, but I want to write fiction. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the memoir is a good starting place. And I decided, okay, if I do this memoir, that would be up to my standard is if I were as honest and transparent with people as possible. And you really are honest and transparent. <laughs> so much so. But I, I can identify with so much of your growing up and, and having a mother that um, substance abuse. Um, but you talk so candidly about that. The things that I saw her do, uh, the things that she experienced, the traumas, those were all things I had to live through too. Mm -hmm. And there was no way to separate the stories. And um, I guess it's the journalist in me, even if she didn't like it, I mean, it's a part of my story. Yeah, and it's the truth. And like you said, when you wanted to do this, you knew you had to bring it. You had to be truthful. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm writing this as a professional journalist. I wanted to hold myself to the same standard that I hold the subject that I sit down with. I get asked very often about, like, how did you develop your voice and how, how, do, how are you so strong and re resilient? And it's really through lived experience, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like I, I got put into a boot camp. I didn't even know it was happening, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And I think because of that, it allows me to have an amazing amount of perspective, both in my writing and in my life. What do you want people to take from the book? One is that no matter how bad your circumstances are, uh, that does not have to dictate the life that you feel like you deserve. The other thing is that while your people while your parents, while your loved ones are still here, you need to ask them everything about their lives. There were conversations my mother and I were able to have because I was doing research for this book, things I didn't know about her that helped me understand her so much better. I've forgiven her long ago, but learning about these things allowed me to extend her more grace than I already have. And I think that's important. You can watch my entire interview with Jamil Hill on our website at clickondetroit.com. She talks about her time at Michigan State University, how she feels she really grew into an adult there. We also talk about that infamous tweet about former President Donald Trump and what was going through her mind when the White House called for ESPN to fire her. Hill's book is on sale wherever books are sold. So great conversation. I think she's so wise beyond her years because she does that. You say she always always repping Detroit. She's yeah. really strong for women empowerment. Indeed. And and like you said about her relationship with her mom and and the things she taught you about like, OK, Absolutely. let's think about our parents. Right. I don't know that I could write some of the things that she wrote about her mother if my mom were still alive. Yeah. You know, I she know was really, really candid. And what she said there at the end about, you know, talking to your parents about 
what their dreams were, what they wanted to be. It really was eye-opening. Like, yeah, you need to kind of have a conversation about, you know, with yeah. your parents. Right. Yeah, because they're selfless. They, because yes. you actually recognize the people in your family who actually made you. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I love her. Thank, Thank you, Kevin. And more on the website. That's right. Your okay. parents are right. people outside of being your, your parents. parents. It's like when you see a school teacher at the grocery store and it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you guys are grocery shopping? Right? You learn so much.